All right, folks. So this is my last major upload before hard to kill. Um, as of now, I haven't seen the knockouts tag titles. I believe they're going to drop in about 13 minutes of uh, time of me recording this. So I'll do a quick reaction to those. I would imagine they're going to announce their opponents for tonight as well, but we'll see. So um, these are kind of my final thoughts last couple months, the overall rebranding back to TNA and just hard to kill. You know, tonight is the night that we're going to see what they got for us. You know, did they underpromise? Did they overpromise? I expect them to deliver. I don't expect this to be like some of the missteps in the past. You know, this seems like something that was very well planned out. You know, I, I do stand by the fact that the the television they did in the final quarter and some of the social media, um, you know, worrying about Samoa Joe winning a world title and all that. I still don't agree with those things. But you know, they they really hit the ground running in 2024. And I get the I get the comments a lot, whether it's on my own channel, Twitter, or people like, why do you still watch this show or review it if you don't like it? I have never not liked it. I shouldn't I sh shouldn't say that. There's been episodes I have not liked. There's been stretches of episodes I haven't liked, but I haven't gone anywhere. Every other wrestling company has has pushed me off at some point, you know. I once upon a time started covering TNA when no one else was doing it or no one else was doing it from a, a positive standpoint. And that's where that was, you know, how I approached things very early on was trying to create a home for TNA fans who wanted to hear something positive. Like that's <laughs> it's very different than how I do things now. And if you're a newer subscriber, you know, I, I kind of, you know, brought up the story in the past. The reason I started doing this was was there was a period of time where I did watch just everything. Uh, this is when I got off active duty and I had quite a bit of money saved. And I just worked two days a week, three days a week as a bouncer. And I, I was home a lot. So I, I watch a lot of wrestling and, um, you know, I fell, I fell out of the, the TNA scene for a little bit with destination America, because I just didn't get the channel. And, um, I've never to this day, like to this day to right now, I do not read wrestling results. I don't go on forums, news sites, dirt sheets, nothing like I literally, I hate the word literally, but I literally just watch the wrestling show and, and react to it. Uh, I just, I've never cared about those things. You know, if I miss an episode, Hey, where can I stream it online? Like I just, if it's not on TV for me, I, I'm, I'm not going to watch it. So, um, there was a period of time I missed and then, uh, started really getting it back, back into it when they debuted on pop TV. Cause that was a channel I got, but I had ordered the pay-per-views prior to pop TV. So the destination America, like the slam anniversary bound for glory is like, I, I, um, I, I, uh, purchased them thought they were so good and was really sh shocked at uh, the hate that they received online, you know, acting like these were shitty ass shows. And, and I just didn't, I didn't have a horse in the race at the time. Like I, I really enjoyed WWE quite a bit back then, but I watched, per, you know, pretty subjectively and just, just, or objectively, I always get those words mixed up, but, um, I just kind of enjoyed what I liked and I thought that TNA was really good and EC3 stuff was really, really good and they didn't get any credit. And then I tried to look for podcasts. Who's talking about the show? And there's nobody. So I decided I wanted to get into the space. You know, I knew that I knew social media. I knew that I knew YouTube. Um, I knew marketing. I knew, you know, Anything that I've ever done as a side project has always had a relative level of success in comparison comparison to those around me trying to do the same. So I knew I could uh, could build something, but you know, it saved my love for professional wrestling ultimately because as I started getting more into TNA, I started really disliking WWE. 
Ring of Honor was boring me a little bit. You know, when I was watching it, there was Jay Lethal and Moose, uh, Briscoes, um, you know, the House of Truth. Like, I really loved all that shit. And it started kind of little by little going away. I saw the early days of like Jay White, you know, doing some stuff there. Um, Leo Rush, you know, and it, it got a little bland for me over time. WWE wasn't fun. I started, you know, kind of losing interest in New Japan a little bit, which I never had a lot of interest, but I, I did watch it for a little bit. So TNA is what kind of saved my wrestling fan. I mean, if the company did, didn't exist, I don't know how much wrestling I'd be watching now. So I always thank them for, for saving me in a sense. And I've had many versions of my show where I've covered it. And um, again, started off very positive. Um, but over the years, it, it's not that I necessarily thought the show was getting worse. I mean, there's been some down times. Don't get me wrong. But when I when I really started covering it, I was like, this is an un unpolished gem. I thought there were things they were doing that were excellent that just needed the bigger audience, which kind of like now in a sense. But the show looked good. It looked very professional. Uh, I like the wrestlers a lot on the roster. Like right now, I'm I enjoy the wrestlers, but like really outside of like Macklin, Moose, uh, Rich Swan, Alicia Edwards, Killer Kelly, uh, those are the ones that come off come to my head immediately. But out really outside of like seven or eight wrestlers, I'm not like in love with these wrestlers. I think they're good and I support them because they're a part of the company. But like I'm really only a big fan of maybe a third of the roster, if that, you know, maybe a quarter of the roster. But back then, up and down the roster, I was like, yo, I, I love all these wrestlers, you know? So I was a little more, uh, you know, positive back then. And, and, and again, thought it was just a, an unpolished gem. And I say, you know, they just got to step up the website. They got to step up the merch, the marketing shit. Um, they got to work on promoting the shows a little better, uh, you know, they were doing one night onlys, which were horrible. And there was just no juice. There was no buzz around this company at the time. So, you know, as the years pass, I start getting excited. because okay, they're doing stuff on Twitch. They got the Global Wrestling Network or whatever the hell it started it off as. And and I was getting excited because I'm like, yo, they're, they're starting to pick up the pace. But then they did a lot of things that I thought were stagnant. Uh, they did a lot of things that I thought they didn't put 100% into. I thought there was a lot of areas that they clearly were not hiring the best that, that you could find. And I understand it's always been like a financial thing with them, but it kind of got to the point where I said, okay, I can only talk about for so long the improvements they can make. And if they're not making them, it's going to be hard for me to remain that positive voice. You know, there's only so many times Bound for Glory could come come around the corner and there's zero fucking buzz for it. Zero online buzz, you know? And it's really been a case still. <laughs> Bound for Glory is always one of their lower buzzed um, events. Doesn't mean the show isn't good. It's just that the, the company clearly, as the year passes, like think of the effort going into Hard to Kill right now and think of the way 2023 ended. It always like uh not dramatically, but actually very slowly. You'll just see it throughout the year. The effort level, the energy just die off. We we see it every single year. So, yeah, I've gotten really frustrated. You know, um, this impact era, this anthem era has been brutal for me as a fan. Because it was kind of coming off. I did. I mean, trust me, I did want them to get away from the TNA stank and the Dixie Carter stank and all that. But I thought once Anthem came aboard, yeah, it was a it was a tighter operation. The ship was not sinking. You know, people aren't saying anymore, oh, TNA is a sinking ship. Remember, we got that all the time. That wasn't happening, but I thought the company was little by little losing their identity. And I saw things getting worse. The wrestling is. Is, is very much improved. That has steadily gotten better since Anthem's taken over. You cannot argue that. 
but there were so many other areas that were just, you know, um, they could not replace Jeremy Borash. They, the, the production quality. I, I mean, I talk about that. You guys already know how much I talk about that. Uh, just the, the theme songs of the wrestlers, even the type of wrestlers they were bringing in. Um, it just, I wasn't enjoying it, you know? And during the pandemic, I thought it fucking sucked, if I'm being honest with you. I brought this up a week or so ago on a different upload, and I've said it many times over the last couple of years, that I was done. I was actually going to pull the plug on the channel. I thought during the pandemic, and you you got to watch the pandemic wrestling with an open mind, right? I mean, you can't, there's no one there. But I thought what they were doing was really bad. Um, you know, I, I got re-energized a little bit with the Kenny Omega stuff. Um, or I think that might have been the beginning of the pandemic. I don't quite remember. I just know there was a point when he was there where I was like, okay, I'm into what they're doing. And then I thought it started getting really bad um, with him, with the Good Brothers. Um, I talk about how much red they use. There was a point where it was, they, they've toned it down a lot. There was a point where I was blind watching the show. Like that whole backdrop was just red. Um, and I was like blind watching it. And I was like, I'm not in, I don't like this. I'm not enjoying this. And then when they came out and said, we do the best empty arena wrestling show in the world. I just said, fuck this. Like, are you not, do you not see that this is not good? So yeah, I was, I was really close to punching out a few times, but there's always something that kind of brings me back. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie over 2023. I was, I was in that same boat again, where I was like, you know, I, I was enjoying things at the top of the year. And as the year progressed, I'm like, I, this might be my last year, you know? Um, and things are now re-energized for me quite a bit. And I'm, I'm sure you've heard a tone in, in the last couple of weeks of my, of my uploads where I'm not destroying everything thing they do and knocking everything they do. They're doing things that I've just been asking for them to do for years because I know they work. I've seen them work. I've had them work for myself on a much smaller level, but I know these things. And it's like, finally, something is sinking in to where they're just not content with the way they were doing television. And I expect this to be a really big year, a really fun year. And when they announced that they were going to TNA, like there was people initially like, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Like I was all for it, but I, w I was not all for it for nostalgic purposes. I was all for it because I knew change was coming. And the last three years, the show has been so Oh, bland, and it doesn't remember where it doesn't matter where they tape television. The shows look and feel the same every time, and it kicks off with the slow motion highlights and C4 spike and we own the night. And first time only said nine times throughout the show, and poorly lit wrestling, poorly lit backstage segments, community theater backstage segments. You know, after a while, it was. It was just driving me crazy. And I just knew when they said TNA is back, that change was coming. And I didn't even give a shit at that point. If the change was for the worse, I just needed something fresh because I just think the show has been fresh for a really, really long time. There, you know, I thought they were very content with bad ring announcing with bad um, production with, you know, and then I talk about the finishing moves. So people are winning with clotheslines and fucking pile drivers and just, I, yeah, I like old school wrestling, but I mean, you know, cutters, which is the new age fucking super kick. Like, I was just like, I'm not seeing anything cool on this show that I'm not seeing anywhere else. But I'm, um, I, I have this new level of optimism. Um, and my, my opinion has changed over the last couple of months because there's, there's been some times where I'm like, man, I don't know if I can trust them. I don't know if this is going to be good. But, uh, you know, as the, as the time has passed, I've really become more optimistic that this is going to be a good show. This is going to start becoming a destination instead of a booking for a lot of wrestlers. And obviously money's going to 
come into play. But when you've got hard to kill, you know, really selling tickets and now snake eyes is selling tickets. Cause you know, I was saying before snake eyes, we should be getting in free to that event because there was no tickets being sold. And I was upset that the prices were the same as for hard to kill, but clearly they've known what they're doing. They've bring, they're, they're bringing some, obviously bringing some good people in who know how to put the butts in seats. And, you know, here locally in Vegas, in Vegas, I see the billboards. I see, um, on Facebook, I get a lot of ads for TNA at the Palms, you know, and I, I mean, when have we ever seen anything like that in the past several years? I think people are very optimistic about what this company can be because AEW is no longer the alternative. That's what I've been saying for a little while now. It's not an alternative anymore. That's why I don't really watch it because it's just it's just it is a knockoff of bad WWE television in my opinion and that's what you know that's like that's what TNA did at one point and it started going downhill very drastically they have an opportunity now that they they will never have again and no wrestling maybe no wrestling company will ever have again and it's to assert themselves as the alternative i've been saying that now for a few months i'm i'm steadfast in that that's their golden opportunity if hard to kill comes and it's it's you know people from wwe coming and winning the titles and tommy dreamer has a long run start trying to relive uh, the glory days of ecw and um the social media is still worried about what AEW and wwe is doing instead of what they what they need to do when their mission and what they need to accomplish then things are not going to go well and they're going to blow their opportunity but if they say now, like, we're going to present a product that you can't get anywhere else. Like, that's what it is at the end of the day. If you look at, again, like, like marketing soapbox for a second. If you look at progressive insurance, Geico, Farmers, all these, okay, they all offer the same thing, right? They offer car insurance or for your home and, and whatever. They, they all offer insurance, right? And the rates are not that fucking different. So how you stand out how does geico stand out from farmers and you look at their commercials right the commercials they all have these great campaigns slogans uh spokesmen and they're funny they're 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 their own brand of humor none of them have tried to knock off what one of the other companies is doing you know progressive is not trying to do what um Trying to think of another company here now. Uh, shit, I don't know. I'll just say Geico again. They're not trying to do the same thing. All right. They're all very, very different. And wrestling has to be presented like that as well. What can we get when we turn on Access TV that we can't get anywhere else? And that's just what I want to see. That's why I talk about the, the fucking the finishing moves, the storylines, and why the show needs to look more like nxt than it does at mlw you know it's never going to look like nxt but you understand where i'm going with that so frustration has really built up for me over the years and um i just think that we're going to have a i've been saying this as well that we're going to have a major high coming out of hard to kill and i think it's going to last for a bit and there's going to be an insane amount of buzz but what do they do with that buzz after that do they rest on their laurels or do they remain hungry? Because we've seen boom periods in the last couple of years where they get the viewership and can't keep them. And it goes back to where it was before. Now, the, the opportunity is there. And hopefully Scott can put himself in a position where he's when he's meeting with wrestlers where they really want to be like they've got to convince him rather than the other way around you know like my wife's a nurse for instance when she goes when she goes to job interviews she's interviewing them um not the opposite because scott is the one doing that he's he's the one that you want to work for i know it's an op opposite but my point is you want to be in a position of power 
when you're negotiating a contract, when you're negotiating a deal, negotiating a job. And, you know, like my wife can go in there and be like, this is what I want to make, you know? Um, and that's where Scott needs to be. I think he needs to be in that position of power. And I think he's becoming more and more respected because Tony Khan is losing respect. But I think he does have to be in a place where he's in a position of power and wrestlers are coming to him and he's like, hey, this is what I'm going to pay you. If you want to be here, boom, rather than someone coming in like my wife does and says, I'm interviewing you, you know. So, um, I mean, I should I handled my last job interview like that. You're, I'm interviewing you. You know, I was in like the position of power. So. We don't want that for TNA. We want them to remain in that in that position. So I am really looking forward to Hard to Kill tonight. I think they've handled everything very, very well. Again, I thought they shit the bed in November and December. I don't care what anyone says. My opinion does not change on that. Relying on we're just going to show you best of matches. I mean, this this card is random. It's just thrown together. There's one story, and it's three Dreamer versus Crazy Steve. And I don't even know how many people care about that story anymore. The formula has to change next year. They can't, they cannot do that. And I understand cutting costs and logistics. And I'm not saying it, say, hey, go spend money for the sake of entertaining with television. But they can't take this approach every year where they're relying on who's going to show up. And, you know, they can only rebrand so many times. This is the last time they can do it. They can't do it again after this. But what they're doing is working right now. And again, it's things that I've just wanted to see from them. And I, it's not difficult. And they're finally getting it. So TNA hard to kill, folks. I'm going to cut it right there. Looking forward to the day that has finally come. And we're going to see what their vision is.